uh, itch. It's one of those horrible words that exists in the Clydesdale world. And uh, what is it? And what do you do with it? How do you get rid of it? Big question. If you could answer that in one go, you'd be doing well. Queensland itch is a big problem in coastal areas of Australia, especially the eastern states, and uh, it's a reaction to a midge or a sand fly bite, they say, but it can possibly also be a multitude of other things. I'm not going to go into that today. What I'm going to talk about today is how we deal with feather mites. And uh, the first step, of course, when your horse has a bit of itch in its leg, is to figure out whether it is actually feather mites or not. Um, in the old days, Greasy heel was one of these things that people used to read about and think about as being a problem in the feathered breeds. And you'd read up about it and it would say that, yes, there are little grapey things underneath the paston and you'd look and see that your horse has these little scabby bits of stuff under the paston too that, that you could interpret maybe grapes. And therefore you'd read up about what to do and you'd make up a nappy sand bath or an iodine bath and rinse your horse's legs in that. And it, it made no difference. And in fact, the problem wasn't greasy heel at all. It was your misdiagnosis. So um, step one is to actually figure out what the problem is. But if you know what it is and you know that it is feather mites, then um, this little video of how we deal with it will help. Uh, basically, what it's called, what, it, what we're doing is called oiling their legs. And oiling has a couple of purposes. Uh, the simplest one is if your horses are already free of mites and you just want to oil their legs to help protect the, the feather, protect the spat and save it from being stained by red clay, uh, in which case you'll mix up a brew of oil with a bit of sulphur and you can just brush that on the outside of their legs without any problems. Uh, in the case of the feather mites, what I'm going to be doing here is totally drowning them in a brew, which I'll explain shortly, because they can get in around the ergot and under the paston and in all these little places that are hard to get at when you normally wash, wash your horses. So... Uh, Without further ado, I'll um, move on and probably put a couple of photos up of pictures of evidence of feather mite. We like to pride ourselves on not really having any here and we've been free of it for a few years, but all of a sudden this year some of the horses have come back with a bit and uh, you feel sorry for them. Um, sometimes you'll find a horse lying down on the ground, constantly chewing its legs. That's an indication that they might have that. Other times you'll hear them stamp, stamping and you know, that's an indication of the irritation. A bit like eczema affects people differently, I think the feather mites can affect horses differently. So some can tolerate it and you don't even know they have it. Um, that's Jess, she just wants more food. Um, here's a mare that's just come here and you'll see in a moment the um, itch, the scabby bits of stuff there where she's been biting. The rest of the leg's pretty clean. No, there's a little scabby bit there too. Not sure, you can sort of, you can see some bits of, bits of scabby stuff there too, but uh, we'll deal with that. And uh, here's a bit of a tell telltale sort of sign on the back of the leg. Back of the back foot, you can see Scabby bits and a horizontal itch mark, and she's touchy there. So, some attention needed. Yeah, ideally, paraffin oil was recommended, or as some people like to call it, pig oil. And uh, it's not made of pigs though, with paraffin it's just a clean oil. An alternative is um, a non-detergent motor oil, like your single grade W30 car oil. But uh, failing that, anything works when you're stuck and you really want to get stuck into doing it. Um, the uh, last bit of cheap oil I could find from one of the car shops in town was about $37 for 5 litres, and that was a bit sort of... A bit steep to use because I find that much almost just disappears on one horse. So I managed to get this hydraulic oil from Repco and it was about not quite $80 for 20 litres. Now I'm afraid it mightn't be medically perfect but it's going to suit me. So we will 
for heating. Now the idea of the oil is that you're going to suffocate the um, the little monsters, but the oil is pretty thick, so a bit of kerosene to thin the oil down. You could probably use kerosene on its own, I don't know. And then the famous sulphur. This is the sulphur. Now the the packet will have all sorts of um, warnings about don't let it get on your skin and things like that, but in your old grandma's recipe books, sulphur was often fed to kids for acne problems and things like that. And the other, the other thing you can do is um, use a bit of the Mectin um, injectable or pour on cattle wormers. This is an entirely off-use purpose, but... Um, <coughs> If you want to make sure, you can suck out a bit the right amount needed for a horse, or you can not do it. And zap that in there too. And if you're a bit of an anti-vaxxer, and you like the idea of maybe inoculating yourself with a bit of ivermectin against um, COVID, well, you can go ahead and put this on the horse's legs with your bare hands. Um, alternatively, you get some AI, cattle AI type arm length gloves so it'll protect your arms a little bit but uh, this stuff hasn't bothered me in the past you just don't want to be wearing good clothes while you do it okay it's recording again this is what the brew looks like in the bottom of a tub I haven't stirred it up much yet it's gonna happen in a moment By doing it like this, you can really get under the castan all around the ergot, and the idea is to totally drown the little things that, not drown, suffocate the little mites. Whereas uh, just painting down on the leg tends to only wet the outsides of the feather and doesn't really get through to the horse's skin. And I've never had this actually irritate the horses, not that I can tell. Not, certainly not as much as the mites do. And if you'd like to go and wash their legs first and dry them before you put this on, you can do that too. You save what you can. No need to have it going all over the ground. see much about what I'm doing here but uh, I might actually turn the video off because it's not very exciting that's the gist of everything you move from here onto the back legs and I find about Four litres per horse seems to be what it takes us. And you can say that's expensive, but uh, when you manage to find oil that's not that expensive, it's not bad for the comfort of a horse.
think it's recording. And if you're not worried about the um, the mites, but you just want to oil their legs, you can make up a similar brew, but without the, the mectin. And you're just oiling the legs to protect the feather. So watch where you stand so you don't get kicked. But it's just a matter of painting the sulfury, oily stuff on. Poking a bit around the back of the heels there. And coming through and uh, this is a bit dry we could do with a bit more oil in it or failing that we go back and do the leg dung and this brew doesn't have the mectin in it come on up okay put your foot down good deal really see much of what I'm doing here except that I am doing it. If you get a bit sparse you don't tend to do a good enough job you may as well sort of not do it because you really need to combat them completely. The only time I might be a bit sparse is if you're pretty sure the horses didn't have any on at all. You really want to work it up into the upside down underneath bits. And all the little tidy holes that feather mites might suddenly come up with. It really makes you feel sorry for the horses that which have it but which don't get dealt with. Or don't get to beat it. And you can give them injections and I've heard of people putting flea collars around pastins, things like that. I can't speak about those because I haven't tried them myself. This this works for us. Come on, up. So thank you for watching. This is what it ends up looking like. Whoops. Try and aim the aim the video camera. And of course the, the the big advantage in doing it like this is you can actually feel for itch spots and make sure you really rub it in well into the pertinent areas. So there you have it. I'm sweating at the moment, not because that was hard work, but because today we're having one of those 90% humidity days, which uh, is pretty rare for up here. But um, that used up about eight litres of oil on the two horses. So you're looking at roughly one litre per leg. The beauty too in lifting their legs to drain is it helps the oil to go back against the, their skin in all of the underneath pastern and fetlock areas. And uh, another opportunity, another alternative, of course, is to just clip their feather if you want to do that. Um, we don't. Another old remedy used to be to just cover them in sump oil. Well, um, diesel sump oil is pretty yucky, full of chemicals and stains like anything. Petrol sump oil is a bit cleaner. And perhaps if you've got nothing else and you're out west and you're not worried about what they look like, you could do that. Um, the cleaner the oil, basically the neater it is. Um, the oil acts to suffocate the mites, the kerosene acts to thin the oil a bit like WD-40 to help it penetrate down towards the skin better. Sulphur is an insecticide amongst other things. You can feed them sulphur in their food as well but uh, that's not really going to get rid of the mites that are on them although it does make a big difference. So uh, that's what works for us and uh, in closing I'll just show you this lovely picture that Sharon Fenson from Young painted of our Lady Pearl, our drover's wagonette.
and Pearl and Debbie pulling it. They should do a wonderful job. And it's time for a cuppa. Cheers.